It's a big tour for you at the moment, and it's going to eventually take you through Chicago. Is that a city that's been important for you over the years? Yeah, it's been, I think we filmed a show there many years ago, and um, back when people used to make DVDs. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, a place we've been to many, many times. We were treated to um, uh, an afternoon out at a, um, a Cubs game, one of the first times we were there. We had a great afternoon. I took loads of pictures of us all um, with, with our Cubs uh, hats on and uh, caps. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's always been a fun place to go. It's, uh, I mean, for me as a drummer, it's obviously the home of some pretty famous manufacturers, you know, uh, Illinois especially, but you know. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's it's always a fun place to go. Well, back to the tour as a whole. It's very interesting to me that in some parts of the world, Keena is an arena band. Other parts, festival headliner. Some parts, you're a theater. Knowing that every kind of market is different in that sense, do you have to change up the show big time from market to market, or is it pretty much the same set list everywhere in the world? The bigger places allow you to take more sort of stuff for a show like projecting sort of visuals or film sort of screen that kind of thing which you know we we do like to do but but at the smaller venues you just can't sort of either fit it in physically or afford to sort of you know employ the extra you know people and stuff that you need to to do so but um the shows we've been playing i mean we we've been playing sort of between about 22 and 26 songs for pretty much the whole tour. So um, people will still get a couple of hours of key, um, whether it's got, you know, fancy visuals or, or whether it's just us on stage. And, um, you know, that that seems to, it seems to be going down well. Um, you know, we, we've been mixing up the set list night after night. We just, you know, we almost never play the same set list two nights in a row. And, um, you know, throwing we've got such a sort of catalog of songs to choose from that we um, we just try and try and make sure that fans don't know what's coming next. Um, you know, we we didn't used to do that so much, but these days I think we really enjoy that um, that process. And cause and effect is the latest album from Keen. I believe it's the fifth overall, and it comes the first album in I think eight years, seven or eight years. Taking a long gap between albums like that, have you already started thinking about the next album? Honestly, we haven't really talked about anything beyond sort of September, which is when the last kind of summer festival shows are kind of booked in. So um, we, um, you know, we have families and kids and, you know, we... uh, Life on the road and in the studio takes you away from that, and I think we all value the the time we have with with our kids. And you know, um, it's so it's not something we're going to immediately follow up. Um, having said that, you're never going to stop Tim from writing songs. So I have no doubt that you know he's got a few ideas tucked away, waiting for the the right moment. Um, so yeah, I I don't know what's coming next. We genuinely sort of, uh, you know, I don't think we're even in a record contract anymore. I think we've worked the five albums that we signed, and I, I think uh, you know we're we're sort of free agents or whatever. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, it's kind of a nice position to be in. We we've been pretty blown away by the way this record's been received and, and especially, you know, the li- in, in the live um, shows, you know, we've been welcomed back, but, but also by a new generation of Keen fans. You know, we were in San Francisco last night and we, we played at the Fox and it was in so Oakland, sorry. And um, it was, um, there were so many young people there, <laughs> people who probably weren't even, you know, born when Hopes and Fears came out. In fact, I was saying to <laughs> from a, a friend of ours, Boris Sun, and we, but because you're one of his favorite bands, and, and he was, you know, son was 15, and he literally wasn't alive when Hopes and Fears came out. So, um, and, and yet we're sort of somehow, with some, we're, we've ended up as one of his favorite bands. And that's a really, that's a really surprising thing, to be honest. 
we don't really know quite how it's happened, but, uh, but it's a great feeling to go and feel like there's a whole new sort of generation who's been sort of denied keen concerts by us being sort of away for a few years. So yeah, it feels great to be back and, uh, and playing it. So, uh, so I hope we'll, we'll do more stuff. Well, your success has been long term and consistent, which is incredible. And Hopes and Fears was, of course, the first record unbelievably 15 or 16 years ago. And not a lot of bands have that huge success in the first record, but not everyone realizes that the roots of Keen go back 10 years or so before that when you guys were playing covers. At what point did you realize that this was a career and not just a bunch of people playing music for fun? I think it was probably uh, the, maybe even the day that, that Hopes and Fears came out. I think until that point, we, we didn't really... You know, you don't want to get carried away. Everyone, when when the first single from that record came out, um, you know, it, it did really well. It went to number three and we were on tour and we were opening for Travis and, you know, it was really exciting and we went to America and we played it, you know, the, the Troubadour and we played it, you know, in, in, in New York, playing the Mercury Lounge and, you know, it's, um, it's just really exciting experiences. But, but, but then we... Yeah, the record came out and then we came back and we played at Glastonbury and this enormous crowd showed up. We were on like the second biggest stage there just in the afternoon one day and um, and then just a, an enormous sea of people were in front of us and, you know, we just, um, we couldn't believe it. There were just so many people there. It was impossible to take in. And the first time you stand up there in front of that many people, it, it's really, um, it's, it's quite mind blowing, and um, and so I guess at that point we just thought, hang on a minute, this is going quite well. Um, Jim, quit going right on another album, <laughs> yeah, because we didn't have any more songs. <laughs> and then, what is life like for you outside of music? I believe you said before that people have to, you know, spend time with their families and all that off the road. But do you have businesses or other things you do, or is really it's keen and family, and that's it? I think it's different for the four of us. Um, Jesse runs an art centre near the town where he grew up, up in Suffolk. And, uh, you know, Tim does some songwriting and, and stuff and production. And uh, Tom had his solo stuff. Um, and I did a lot of cycling <laughs> and uh, tried to get fit. And um, I'd also I have a three-and-a-half-year-old boy at home, Austin, who um, is... Uh, you know, it's taken up a lot of uh, mine and my wife's time, but it's been a real sort of joy being able to be at home for the first few years of his life rather than, you know, so many parents have to go straight back to work and put kids in nursery or get, you know, get carers for them and, you know, nannies and whatever. And, and so for me to you have the chance to, to sort of deliberately be around and stay at home um, for for the first few years of his life has been has been you know, a chance that, you know, so few people get. It's been amazing. And a huge compliment to you is that even when a song is a ballad or a softer song, you always get your drum fills in, and they're always cool drum fills. Was that ever a sticking point in the band where <laughs> the producer was saying, like, can you please tone it down on this? Um, I mean, it's, I guess the way that recording works in the modern age, allows a lot of editing but um you know we I, I feel like we all take an interest in what each of us plays if that makes sense so i you know tim, tim is very sort of tasteful when it comes to you know drum fills and he'll put things in demos or he'll you know he'll make a point when we're when we're sort of in pre-production to sort of say, oh, I like that one, you know, that, that sounded good there, or, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. And I, I feel like the more we've gone on, the more collaborative things get, actually. It's, um, you know, the, the second record, we felt a bit under pressure, and I think it, it was quite a tough time, and getting that, getting the drums right on the second album was quite tough, but, um, you know, there were a lot of multiple runs of songs, but, um since then, it's it's been very collaborative, and you know, the, and Jesse Grace Bass, he he's also a very good drummer, so he, you know, is is also thinking about 
you know, his bass part and the way it relates to drums. And, and it's, um, so I've got a lot of supportive, you know, knowledgeable people around to help sort of nudge me in the right direction as well. But, uh, but I'm glad, I'm glad you feel they're, uh, they're tasteful. <laughs> And before I ask my last question, is there a keen accomplishment that you're most proud of at this point? Because you are nearing 20 years of success at this point. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty remarkable. Uh, I mean, that in itself, I think, is um, is something to be very proud of. I'm honestly, we're having so much fun just on the road, hanging out, the four of us, you know, plus our sort of, you know, extended family of our crew. We just still enjoying things, like genuinely we're enjoying life back on the road and together so much at the moment. I think I think that's that's a, a really great thing. You know, I mean I'm not gonna you know, without naming names, you, you see bands at, at festivals and you know, there's, they're missing an original member or, or they're, you know, they're arriving in separate limos or, or whatever. And sometimes you sort of worry that they're not enjoying it. And um, and I feel like we're enjoying it more than ever. And I think the time away really helped. When we came back, we sort of, I think we had a new appreciation for for each other and the, the playing and, you know, the singing and, you know, that each of us does. And, and also some of the old songs, I think we, we should have forgotten that, you know, I think a, a bit of time away makes you come back and think, God, that, you know, that's a really good song. You know, we can be, we should be more proud perhaps of, of some of the things we've achieved than, than maybe in the past, you know, we've sort of, than maybe we've let ourselves be in the past. So, um, yeah, it's, it's such a nice atmosphere just us on the road and um you know we we're very sort of democratic if somebody doesn't want to do you know a certain show because the date is a certain thing you know then that's fine you know there's no sort of stress and there's no um frustration with each other and and um and and that's a really nice way to be you know because it is we need a good reason to be away from home. You know, it's got to be, it's got to be right. <laughs> and and so far, it's been it's been really wonderful. Yeah, this this whole touring cycle has just been a total blast. I love that. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to the New York City show. So, in closing, Richard, any last words for the kids? <laughs> uh, yeah, play music. <laughs> um, play the music you like. I was chatting to this guy last night. I was saying who. Um, yeah, he's like 15 and he's writing songs and using garage band on his, you know, I don't know, on his iPad or his Mac or whatever and just writing songs. And, and I just love that there are so many avenues for people to just, uh, you know, even Jesse's son who's like, I don't know, how old is he? He's like um, six maybe um, or seven and he's like learning how to use garage band and, you know, just playing around with music. So, yeah, I don't know, it's just, just play around, have fun, don't worry too much about what you're doing. But, you know, I I just, uh, I love that there's so many opportunities for kids out there to, to make music. Um, and also, you know, so, you know, in, the, in looking after yourself, given the sort of current, you know, concerns, go to live music because there's nothing, there's nothing better.